Jimmy Butler's media day appearance that uh, the Heat uh, socials had fun with. Then came a report from Michael Wallace, who used to be based out of Miami, was part of ESPN's Miami Heat beat before relocating to Memphis, where he said 98% of the Heat front office wasn't down with what Jimmy Butler did. It was a weird per- percentage, yeah. 98.9. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 17 of them. So yeah. what, that's, he said that this team, isn't in line with the culture. It's not in line with heat culture. It's a, it's too look at me. And I was curious what your thoughts are because I, I'm pretty sure Pat Riley views that and doesn't get it at all. But uh, Jeremy and I were talking before the show that we actually think Jimmy Butler did the Miami Heat organization a big time solid yeah. by taking all the attention and putting it on himself rather than their failings this postseason and off season. Absolutely. I mean, him coming in and being emo Jimmy during media day was a huge distraction from all of the other questions about. Damian Lillard and Tyler Hero and Kyle Lowry not speaking and all of the other storylines that we could have been focused on. Instead, I was coming in and doing piano covers of emo songs. So I've got um, secondhand information, which means it was not directly told to me, but directly told to me by someone who's a part of it. And I absolutely believe this person 100%. Uh, Jimmy Butler and the Heat, it's not a love affair by any stretch between the front office and Jimmy. Jimmy is a player who is like many superstars. He can be selfish and he plays by his own rules. And it can be frustrating to Pat and to others who are into discipline and into togetherness and into what goes here goes there. So I think they look at Jimmy, I think they think it's tired, but he's so good. And that's the problem when you've got a player like Pudge Rodriguez, who's the biggest pain in the neck ever and leaves your team in the middle of the year to say F you to our hitting coach to go to his own hitting coach and then lies about it and the players are having a hard time with them in the clubhouse, or a Hanley Ramirez, but then you win, it's pretty hard to argue. You don't have to love them off the court, but you love them on the court. And I think that's the case with Jimmy. I don't think there's a lot of love off the court, but boy, is he a special player on the court. Okay, but let's talk about some of the separation here, because I think it matters. Uh, 98.9 would be 9 out of 10 people in the Heat front office is yeah, what which we're roughly doing. Jeremy, Jeremy's pretty plugged in. We know people in that organization. I think that's uh, overestimating. It's a slightly high number. By quite a bit. I mean, especially s- considering everyone kind of had fun with it. Okay, but I'd, I'd go one step further, okay, because this is not hard to understand from any vantage point. 100% of 100% of Pat Riley doesn't like the idea of somebody showing up at his sacred cathedral of military learning and making a costume party out of it. Like, I have not talked to him. Get Damian Lillard. Yeah, exact won't. counterpoint. I, I, land right, the whale, yeah, and then you don't uh, need people uh, causing uh, distractions. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Uh, agreed and understood. Told you he was failing the city. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To, to me, though, the, the, the best part of this is, of course... The 78-year-old guy is going to get battered around by, well, when I brought Shaq in here, because my move for the last 15 years is I'll try and get the giant guys and keep people caring for 20 years when sometimes Sacramento goes those 20 years without anything. Orlando goes those 20 years. I'll keep getting the guys. So it goes Shaq. And Shaq comes in, and he's his own economy. He's not heat culture. He's Shaq culture. He's got his own people. He... Uh, you know, shows Wade some bad things about what it is to be a star before Wade realizes what it is to be a star. I'll bring you LeBron. I'll bring you Bosh. And then I'll get you Jimmy Butler. And at the end of this run for both of them, Jimmy Butler and Pat Riley, there's two generations of gulf between them and how they think about sports and me- what media day is supposed to mean. Like, they, of course, there's going to be conflict. Are you there. arguing for the sanctity of Media Day, he where they loves where media they bank the entirety of hot seconds with Jax? <laughs> I'm sure Riley didn't like Shaq's squirt gun either. Yeah. Okay, just deal with it. Exactly. Agreed. Yes, of course. The stars rule. Why is he arriving with a I squirt know, gun? I know, but I know, <laughs> but, you, but you guys say yes, but of course the stars rule, and Lillard didn't because the organizations have taken the power back. Can and, you? Explain why there is any hate toward Pat Riley and, and, and concern that he doesn't get the whale when all he does is get you guys these. All he did was get you rings oh. as the most well, successful LeBron franchise did. next to no. the Warriors. They've, they've, lost, yeah. they've lost three consecutive finals. Getting there is a massive achievement. Yeah. They, they were in the play-in last year and went on one of the more unpredictable runs in the history. No, I know, I'm not hating Pat Riley. I love Pat Riley. But I am presently criticizing Pat Riley, and I think you can operate in a world where you do both. You respect the man and what he's done with this organization as an executive down here in Miami. It's been brilliant. 
But it's not exactly nitpicking to say he's missed out on his last eight superstar pursuits. And the eight. Miami Heat are worse off for it. Wait, wh- who, who's eight? Name them. Kevin Durant twice. Donovan Mitchell. Right. Damian Lillard. Uh-huh. Jimmy Butler the first go around. Russell Westbrook twice. Okay. Bradley Beal. All right. James Harden. Twice. That's 10. Those We're all just, sound like guys I really well want on the Miami Heat. By the way, yeah. you're welcome is what Pat Riley should say to you. Which of those players, maybe Durant the first time, maybe Butler the first time, but I think Butler was better for the Heat the second time because he was a little more mature. But all of that said, are you so sure that Lillard is the difference maker on the Heat team? Are you 100% I think, sure I think Damian that Lillard that money... He's yeah. going to bring you a title. Yeah. Well, well, uh, he, I he think he's on Milwaukee. Yeah, I think Damian Lillard strolls into to Biscayne, and he's the best player. He's the best player on the team. Do they yeah, win a title? That's you can what say he's playoff asking. Jimmy, and I can counter argue that with uh, playoff Jimmy looked bad as Finals Jimmy, and he's just getting older. And I know Damian Lillard's thirty three, but I, I think Damian Lillard strolls into a team that made the NBA Finals and makes them better, a team that really struggled offensively, struggled to keep up with the Denver Nuggets offensively. I think he solves a lot of that, and now he goes to a rival that you upset, and they get better, and Boston stays aggressive, knows that their roster isn't good enough to beat Miami. What do they do? They flip the script, and they go after somebody that you were interested in, and you get your lunch money taken from you. I, I think you can criticize Pat Riley's failings this offseason and not come what across as a hater. Done, though? The Blazers got a way better package for Lillard than what Miami was offering. He could Miami, have done. Maybe they could have gone out and, and facilitated a three-way. That's what they the could have done. the assets the Blazers got way better than what the Heat Th- were offering. That's what they could have done. And we only know the post-spin on what the Heat supposedly offered where they just found three draft picks and Jovich hiding under the couch. Because before, the person that I trust the most when it comes to Heat reporting was telling me it was Tyler Hero, take it or leave it, and they haven't spoken in months. I'm going to say... It's not too much of a stretch to say they should have done better there. There is more information on that, though, that I had not considered in some of what my information was on this, which is the Heat were legitimately stunned that there wasn't back and forth of any kind there. That that and that oh, and that play stupid no, games no, win no. stupid prizes. They drew they drew a hard line. No, no but after months of. Portland's not dealing with us and Portland maintaining that stance throughout because Portland, as far as I know, never got to the point of knowing what the assets in Brooklyn and Utah were available in exchange for Hero. That the Phoenix part of the deal also fit with Miami and Lowry, that that part of the deal worked, and then the other part of the deal, Portland never heard or entertained, and then after that, the hard line was drawn. The hard line was drawn after it was drawn first by Portland. There was no communication. And I want to keep my eye on the ball here because they also lost out on Bradley Beal, and Bradley Beal would have helped this basketball team, and Bradley Beal could have been had for peanuts, and they decided against that. It's not peanuts. What's his salary? (laughs) Excuse me. Again, I don't care about the luxury tax. But, and I shouldn't. Because you don't run the team. I shouldn't care. He's I'm a, a fan, fan, David. And I want and I see other owners spending into the into the luxury tax to maintain competitors. I have a championship window that is shrinking by the day, and I don't care about Mickey Harrison's financials. We've won we've gone into it. He got the team for nothing. <laughs>